Hello, in this Steam Deck video I am going to show you how to set up DockStation which allows you to play PlayStation 1 games using EMU Deck and pretty darn simple. just want to say this video does not condone piracy, it is for educational purposes only. So first of all, what you need to do is go to your desktop mode, press the Steam button, go to power, go to switch to desktop and now in a few seconds it will switch to desktop. Just something to bear in mind, don't start trying to use desktop straight away with the mouse. I find that sometimes it can take a few seconds for the mouse to properly, you know, kick in. Should be fine now. And I'll show you how to navigate, you know, around desktop mode. You can click to, you know, put your mouse pointer somewhere. And that also is the same, uh, that also triggers a, you know, a click as well, a left click. You can use the right trackpad, which is my preferred method, as moving the mouse. And if you click the trackpad in, it's a left click. If you press R2, it's a left click. If you press L2, it's a right click. So those are the main keys that you will need. Next, we need to download EMU Deck. So open up Firefox, or if you have another browser, maybe you've already set it up. And if it's not there, you just go to all applications, scroll down, and it'll appear there and just launch it up. Now, Search for EMU Deck or go to emudeck.com. I've already got it there. And you might be thinking, how do you get the keyboard to appear? You have to press the Steam and X button. So Steam and X. It can take a few seconds for it to load up. Just wait patiently. Here's another little tip. If you've been in desktop mode for quite a while in one session, maybe you've gone to sleep mode or your, your device has your... You know, your Steam Deck, you put it to sleep mode and you turn it back on. Sometimes the keyboard doesn't work straight away. Just a little tip. Just go out to desktop mode. There's a return to gaming mode button on the desktop. Go back into it. Worst case, restart and the keyboard should start working again. So type in emudeck.com. Click enter. Go right here. So I'm just going to select that. Go to download. Select download installer. It will tell us that we need to copy it to the desktop. That's fine. And now that is done. Now, open it up and EMU Desk. You're going to right click that using L2, click copy using R2, go to desktop, right click using L2, paste one file. I've already got it, so I'm not going to do it again. And I'm going to close all this down. Now we can actually open up EMU Desk. So if we open this up, Again, you just double tap it. Uh, you know, I, I used R2, but you could use your finger. Mine says quick update, custom update. You will probably say quick mode or custom mode or quick install or custom install. And it's, it's, it's effectively the same process. Make sure custom update is selected or the custom mode. Click continue. Select where you want to store your ROM. This is also where you store your BIOS files. So if you have multiple micro SD cards for example and maybe you are spreading your emulation library out you will need the relevant BIOS files again in that particular what's it called micro SD card okay so I've got SD card selected that's fine you can do an internal but I prefer SD card select your device Steam Deck should be selected by default if not make sure it is click continue Deselect everything except DuckStation. So make sure DuckStation is selected. That is the PS1 emulator. DuckStation's had a lot of ups and downs. You know, he died, he came back, he died again, now he's back again. <laughs> click continue. And now click Citra, click DuckStation. And I'm going to click continue. For the emulation station theme, click Epic. I mean, choose whatever you want. Install Homebrew Games, just select No. And that's just telling it, you know, what it's going to do. Click finish. That's it. Just something to bear in mind. If you think, okay, maybe you've already set up, you know, EMU deck before. Maybe for PS2 games using the PCSX2 emulator. If you go on here, you might be thinking, I've deselected PCSX2. What's going to happen to my PCSX2 or other emulator installations? Nothing. It won't delete it. It won't reset it, it just won't touch it. So if you've you know deselected them in both of those, you know, the first menu and the second menu, if you are if you are, you know, if you've already installed it, don't worry, nothing actually is gonna happen to them, they'll still be there. Fine. Okay, now we can add games and our BIOS files before we launch the Steam ROM manager. So where is all that located? So if you've installed it on your micro SD card, go to the micro SD card in emulation in BIOS. 
there will uh, sorry there won't be here you just put all the playstation one you know bios files so i've got it right here somewhere yeah the scph files like scph 1001.bin that's one of the best ones to get for legal purposes i cannot provide you know the bios files but honestly if you google ps1 space bios space file space download and search you will find it it's not hard to find this is where you paste them here and if let's say you have some sort of zip file and then how do you extract that before you copy the stuff over what you do let's say i've got this zip file here this is a raw file but i mean this is a zip file but same principle all compressed you right click it using now two go to extract click extract here auto detect subfolder let's go for the process and in there just copy the bios files and they need to be in the structure that i showed you just directly here some other emulators have their own folders it does not you know anticipate ps1 to have its own folders or ps2 for example as you can see or you know xbox with complex and mcpx so just put them directly here if you have any questions about anything or get in you know any links or you know anything to do with the video in general feel free to post you know uh, feel free to you know post on the discord group link in the description now go back to emulation roms this is where you put all your games scroll down to, 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 to psx not ps1 psx so you'll remember that's what it was originally called and for those you know you know give the video a thumbs up if you remember what the other psx was a little later in the ps2 era and what region had it you know comment down below so you just put the games here usually your games are probably iso or like dot bin q format i've got dot chd i'm going to explain that very very soon just bear with me but you put all your games here and if you go to system info dot text low tip it tells you what console it is if there's any you know you know, ambiguity and you know the supported file extensions like i said i will explain chd very soon now that you've added your games and your bio files launch the steam rom manager click yes and we need a bit of configuration here and we don't have that much more to do so in here you want to go ahead and toggle off the parser toggle and just enable emulation station de and emulators so the reason we you know toggled it off because it toggles it turns off all the emulators and you want that otherwise from, let's say if we've you know installed duck station that will by default show all our playstation one games in our general steam library if you do that like you can have like a hundred ps1 games that will be mixed in with your steam library if you deselect it there'll be a separate collection which i'll show you soon later in the video and it'll be a lot easier to navigate around so now click save i was getting error but i'll find it works anyway and now go to preview go to generate app list i find after a few seconds only two icons appear so if you have more than let's say emulation station and dock station if two appear that's fine if you click maximize the rest appear as well and to change the thumbnail you literally just hover over one click the arrows like so there's different thumbnails Ooh, i quite like that one i'm going to leave that one and you can download this thumbnail with that button there and you can press this button here to add a, an image so if you want to override it feel free to other than that click save app list i'm gonna go off it now go back to emu deck there's a few things i still want to show you in here and you don't want to go through the process again you just go tools and stuff and from here one of the things i want to show you is the emu deck compressor and this is why our ps1 games or I'm gonna say files but there's only one file crash bandicoot was in chd format it this is a built-in compression tool that can compress up to 70 percent i usually get about 40 or 50 percent compression which is you know a nice saving if i'm you know being honest for doing jack all so you literally click run the compression tool bear in mind bear this in mind it can take a bit of time for the compression to run so if you've added some games just do it as you go along it won't be that bad otherwise i, I did it I, I added a bunch of ps2 games that's what took most of the time not the ps1 but ps2 and it was a four five six it was a long time i was creating a video and ended up pausing a good thing i did <laughs> but yeah so yeah it's good to use the compression tool 
helps with your games and if you want to update the emulator you can go here separately as well and i think it's the flat pack nope so for duck station is the app image and did you do they don't appear here either oh yeah there it is psx you just deselect them all just select the ones you want click ok if there's an update it'll pop up and you just go for the installation process Another cool thing is the save backup. You can enable save backup so you save your backup, backs up your saves to a cloud storage like Google Drive, Dropbox, for example. It's in beta, but still a nice feature. Click go back. And if you go to BIOS checker, this is cool. It will check and see if your BIOS is detected and give you any warnings if there's any problems. It's fine. You can click check again if you've just added it, but that's all good. That's a little check for you. And Steam ROM Manager is where we was before. The other thing that you want to go to is Emulator Guides. If you go to here and select Duck Station, it'll give you some... I mean, it's not really giving you many hotkeys. There is more than that, trust me. And I'll cover it briefly in this video, and I'll have a separate video covering it in more depth and just if you just want that video at a later date. If, let's say, you are messing around with Steam Deck settings, I mean, your Duck Station settings, you mess something up, click Reset Configuration, you're all good to go. And that's it. So you're all set up now. You can go ahead and go back to Return to Gaming Mode. So from Gaming Mode, there's two ways of launching the game up. You can either directly use Duck Station or you can use Emulation Station. Emulation Station looks nice, but I find Duck Station, I find it easier to find the controller configuration that works best. So in Emulation Station, let me show you this first. If you go to play, it's all, obviously I've got the Epic Noir theme, but if you've got a different theme, you'll be, you won't be that awkward to find. Just scroll through it, and we'll get like PlayStation. There's my PlayStation game. There we go. So I'm gonna quit out of this. And f most of the time, I recommend Emulation Station. Before Duck Station, I recommend going to Duck Station directly. You might be thinking, oh, where are these? Let me show you that. Press the Steam button, go to Library, and you'll notice a new tab called Collection. Go to there, Emulation, and all of it that you've installed appears here. If I go to Duck Station, before I run it, go to the controllers, and you want to find this configuration. Where is it? This one, Duck Station, is in the community layers. Duck Station PS1 with analog mouse achievements and leaderboards. There are other Duck Station configurations. Feel free to, you know, check them out. If you prefer them, go ahead and use one of them. This is the main one that I use. This is the one I prefer. They literally just press A or download this, you know, enable it. You can leave everything as default. And now what we can do is launch up Duck Station. Duck Station menu works really well with the game controller, hence why it's still not that much of an issue. Here, you can go down, go to your settings, and there's a bunch of stuff like pause on start, feel free to go through it, press R1 and R1 to go through the different settings. Most of the time, you're gonna leave all this stuff as is. Again, emulation speed, feel free to increase it, feel free to increase the turbo speed, because I'll show you how to you know, enable turbo mode soon. And for the GPU, you can change the renderer from Vulkan to OpenGL. Bonsi Vulkan works so well. I recommend enabling VSync. By default, it comes off disabled. For internal resolution scale, I recommend doing automatic based on window size. And based on the window size, it'll give you the best resolution that it determines, you know, that it thinks is best without you know compromising performance. And as it's an old emulator, it's an old it's an old console that this emulator is emulating, it works fine. Okay, so you can increase the field of view from 4x3 to chosen display exploration in 3D games. I mean, feel free to enable it and feel free to go to exploration, go to 16x9. But honestly, there's some games like Crash Bandicoot, it has issues and I'm going to go for game native. And but it's it's a game by game basis that so you're going to have to, you know, have a look at it. And, do, 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 do. and honestly, for the most part, that's it. You can you know, enable post-processing post shaders. Feel free to have a look. Volume settings, some extra hotkey settings, but we'll I'll cover that in a second. If you want to override the controls, go down here, change this controller type to analog, digital, whatever you want. Digital is fine. And if you pre you've pressed that, so if I press right, as you can see, it would have changed it there. I'm going to change it back up, back to up, and hotkeys. Like I said, 
you memory card yeah that's fine it's all good feel free and i would say enable achievements and to do oh, i need to log in this is retroachievements.org feel free to log in and you know create an account and now you can go back go to game list open your game okay so if you keep the left trackpad so i'm gonna move this back a little bit if you keep the left trackpad not pressed but just your finger on it you get this menu and there's a few different you know really useful options here one of the options is load state you have to keep it pressed and then let go and i've loaded the state and again if let's say i was to play a bit uh, oh see daisy let's say if i was to save the state you just keep it pressed let go it's saved it now let's say if i go here and i want to load that state up again Ooh, that was pretty cool i think i probably have done that before to be fair load state and again you have to hold it for that for quick menu keep hold and press and again you can go to cheat list if there's any cheats there's a lot of cheats for a lot of playstation one game like widescreen 16 by 9 you can enable it literally from here let's see what it looks like when i do it from here cheat list mm, i would need to enable 16 by 9 but you see those green things at the left and right they don't look good and yeah it did it depends on the game how it's been set up and coded i'm gonna toggle this off okay and you can change the slot so this is your save slot if you keep it pressed you are you can just use your you know your, your do the touch screen let's say if we go to number one you got to keep it pressed remember yep that's fine and well, once it disappears after a few seconds if you just tap the pause it pa pauses the game you can you know fast forward And you can swap disc if you have a game that requires swapping disc and achievements as well. Like Final Fantasy, I think you you will have multiple discs. So that's Duck Station for PlayStation 1 games. This is a comprehensive guide. If you have any questions, feel free to post on the Discord group. Link in the description. Any questions about any links or any download files that you know, you're know you just not sure of, feel free to post in there. We'll help you. And you know, like the video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.